That says weathering. I know it's it's terrible handwriting. Hey everybody, uh, Adam Savage in my cave, uh, and for today's show and tell, show and tell, technique tip. Not a one day build, uh, but for today's show and tell, I'm using my new microscope, which we just shot a couple of videos on, and uh, I am psyched to show you something I learned last night. Um, one of the most regular refrains I hear from fans of the channel is how much they appreciate all the weathering we have discussed on this channel. I have done many weathering tutorials. I talk about how I love building objects just to layer in the narrative at the end with the patina of use and abuse and the history of an object extant on its skin. Uh, the wonderful Kate Sabaker has shown some incredible professional techniques uh, and her incredible prowess. Uh, and <clears throat> weathering, we get a lot of a lot of support for showing how we do weathering here on on Tested. And I was at my desk at home last night, and I was I had just. I've been watching John Wick 3, and I that reinvigorated my interest in this cross, which is a key MacGuffin uh, in the early part of John Wick 3, or I guess in the middle. Um, the switch between Act 1 and 2, I believe, is what this really is. The MacGuffin that allows the switch between Act 1 and 2 of John Wick 3. Um, and I, look, this is a standard uh, John Wick cross you can buy on Amazon or eBay for about $20. Uh, they're not that exotic, but it was a, it was too new to me. And last night, in about 15 minutes, I got it to look like this. And uh, I, well, oh right, I'll cut some close-ups from the microscope here so you can see up close. Hold on, let's uh, let's just start recording. Yeah, there we go, and we can uh, we can focus in, and you can see a real nice patina on this. It's very much feels like old abused metal with dirt and grime. And this whole weathering technique from a new part took all of about 15 minutes, 20 minutes total. Um, I'm really pleased. And okay, so I, I have talked about, for me, weathering is in, has it traditionally been in two broad categories, acrylic and oil weathering. They're, I've weathered with everything, but broadly these two are, are, are uh, the, the, the main techniques. And for acrylic weathering, I will take an object like, uh, uh, I will take an object that has gotten its official paint job, like it's, here's the color separations, the bricks are this color, the windows are that color, and then I will often seal it with like a matte spray. I'll give it a barrier coat between its paint job and the weathering with something like a workable fixative or a matte, a matte spray. Then I will go over that with acrylics uh, to bring in the weathering. And that's usually a technique of using a, using a spritz bottle full of isopropyl alcohol uh, in conjunction with washes of acrylics. And the alcohol lets the acrylic thin out and seep into the corners. It allows you also to take off the acrylic when you want to. Um, R2-D2 is all weathered with streaks and tips, which is like a spray, hairspray. And then that weathering is removed using, uh, uh, same thing, isopropyl alcohol, which tends to leave the finish shinier and shinier over the years, but it leaves dirt in the interstices. I found this on the web. That's not what I was asking about, but apparently she's curious about weathering techniques. Um, Anyway, last night, so, uh, 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 I covered recently on the channel, oh gosh, I don't have any B-roll for this right now. I covered recently on the channel one of the Leonardo codices that I picked up, I collected. Um, <clears throat> and one of the things about Leonardo's codices is the original Forrester series, one, two, and three, which are in the Victorian Albert Museum collections. They have covers that are super worn out, like dark uh, vellum, like a heavy vellum, like a skin uh, with leather ties. And they are, they are just beat to hell in a, like a way that I find really compelling. Um, and I wanted to, 
I wanted to do some weathering on the Leonardo replicas that I have in the house. And so for me on something like that, it's not a, it's not a one day solution. It's more like the accretion of a lot of little bits of work. So I have a lot of paper props and I, I wanted to keep a little bit of, uh, I wanted to keep some weathering at my desk at home so I could just sort of pick it up every every couple of days and add a little bit of weathering. And to that end, I picked up this little earth tone watercolor set here um, with mostly, you know, there's raw umber, burnt umber, there's a yellow, there's a light yellow, there's a black, there's multiple shades of brown. I picked this up as a thought of like, I will... I will use this to do some weathering on my paper props. And it's been lovely, right? So I just say, I get a glass of water and I sit there with the water and I get a little bit of brown and I, I thin it out, I thin it out on here and then I just add a little bit and dab it and let it dry and see how it goes. And that's been very rewarding. I've been meaning to show you this technique, but I'm not quite ready yet. Uh, that's not the weathering I wanted to show you today. What I wanted to show you today was that the other day, that last night, I picked up the, the, the John Wick cross and I decided to hit it with watercolor. Watercolor on metal, no, that, that's not gonna work. Except that it does actually work. And I'm gonna show you on this key to Erebor. Is this the key to Erebor? Let me just look this up, make sure. Yes, this is Thorin's key to Erebor. A lovely bit of prop replication from our friends at Weta Workshop and the inimitable Peter Jackson. Um, it's a great, great piece. Uh, but it, like a lot of uh, 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 commerce replicas of props, it's got only one weathering pass, which is that it's been cast in a, a pop metal alloy, some zinc and some aluminum and some other magic garbage that they found somewhere. Uh, and then it's been given a, what looks like a, a black spray pass. And then someone just hit it with a rag, something like that. It's been a very, just one pass with weathering. We're gonna give it a, a second and third pass under the microscope. Oh, I guess I can turn that off. Um, we're gonna give it a second and third pass under the microscope so that you can see just how this stuff lays out, lays on, um, because there are some advantages to using watercolors on a, on a piece like this that I really, really enjoyed, and I can't wait to show them to you. All right, so um, I'm gonna do this in two ways. Uh, I'm gonna make this shot that you're looking at right now, I'm gonna make it a, a kind of a medium close-up, and then you'll get to see the extreme close-up here on the microscope, and we can cut between those two things. Let's go. All right. So... like I think that's what it's like I was thinking about the cross of Coronado which is why it's here on the table uh, all right so there we go let's see if I can okay all right so this is really really straightforward I am literally going to I'm literally just going to take a little bit of water on my brush. I'm going to thin it out. I'm going to use some of this dark brown here. Not the black yet. I'm going to do dark brown. I'm going to do two passes on this. Oh, right. Am I recording on here? Uh, not just yet, but here we go. Uh, yeah. I'm just trying to think if I'm forgetting anything. No, no, no. Okay, here we go. So uh, I get a little bit of water on my brush and then I'm gonna go in here with this brown and I'm just gonna hit it with the water. Like I'm gonna keep on petting it and I'm getting the watercolor real thick here. And now I'm gonna press record on the, on the uh, microscope and I'm bringing in this brown and I'm just gonna come in and I'm gonna hit it all over. Oh yeah. And you see that when I get it on nice and thick, I actually, it's actually staying. If I, if it, if the watercolor was really thin, if the watercolor was thin as watercolor usually is, it, it barely sticks. You can see there that it's beading up. But if I get it nice and thick, I get it nice and thick and I hit it like this. Okay. 
Let's get some over here. Now, I, look, I'll bet there are people out there with whole weathering tutorials in this. I have not looked it up. I, I do not imagine that I am unique and have found some brand new technique for weathering. This is a new to me technique. So, you know, you might have some elaborations on this. This might be something you do all the time. I'd love to hear about it in the comments. That's great. So now I've got, I've got a bit of, I've got a bit of stuff all over this thing. I can just rinse out my brush. Now, I'm just going to hit it with a dryer for right now. Do I have the dryer? Wait a second. It feeds up. I don't know why I'm yelling. I think you can kind of see already what's remarkable about this. I'm going to get a little more in a couple of places. Okay. So I think it's clear here on the microscope image why I like this technique. I mean, as as that as the watercolor dries it gives these very really kind of amazingly variegated finishes hold on let's get a close up here i mean that does not look like a single color pass to me that that's that is a single color pass but it does not look like one and that's pretty amazing but there's another aspect to this that i particularly love and it's this, let's see here, where do I have that I can hold on? I mean, oh, okay, right. Unpainted, painted. Now, it's not like I'm looking for a specific look here with the key to Erebor. I just wanted to show, I just wanted to show how, how amazing this looked for rust and dirt. But the thing that is even more amazing about it is how both this is a this is a weathering technique that's actually pretty good for the hand right like I'm rubbing it and it's not coming off but if I got a little bit of water if I get just a little bit of water on a rag just a little bit of a wet rag and I start to hit it I start to be able to take it way down so anything you don't like you can just pull back off again. And here, I'll do one half of it this way. And now we have, hold on. Unpainted, painted, painted and washed off again. You see that? You see how nice that looks? I'm really, look, this is, this is great for jewelry pieces and smaller pieces where large paint gestures are just gonna be hard to clean up and can really vex you. Uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of a wash of black on top of here. Um, Cause I wanna show you how, what that looks like. So we're gonna get a little bit of, a little bit of black paint here. Oh, look here. Just gonna get it all real dark. And on this, we're gonna give it a little bit of a little bit of black, just kind of randomly around. And we, we dab, we dab, we dab, and we dry. Oh, right? Right? Look at how great that is instantly. Okay, okay, I got one more for you. I got one more amazing one, which is when I use this um, this lighter color here, this one right here, or this one, watch th what happens with this. So uh, I'm a little dirty, but that's fine. Here we go. I'm gonna get a lot on this brush here. 
Now this is a brighter color than the metal and the weathering. So how is this going to work? I get that on there. What is that? Yeah, that's not. That's kind of weird looking. Um, we're going to give it a little bit of some random. There we go. That's all. Oh, oh, right. Let's do some on this, this part here. Great. And there, I'm just going to. I'm going to give a little bit more variegation. Great. And we're going to hit that with a blow dryer. Now, the thing about this, yeah, it doesn't look quite great. So I'm going to, I'm going to come and I'm going to come and move it around a bit. That's the thing about the watercolors is they move. You're able to move them really quickly. I'm actually painting while looking into the screen, which is in and of itself kind of far out. But. but yeah, see that? See how, again, this is unpainted, <laughs> painted. That is a gosh darn great bit of Dirt and grime. Um, yeah, I'm really, really happy with that. That is just great. Unpainted, whoop, painted. And, you know, when I really want to, if I really want to here, I'm going to hit this with some, uh, this is isopropyl alcohol in a spritz bottle that puts out a really nice little spray there. I just hit it with that. And I bring it. It doesn't pull off as fast as the acrylic, but it definitely does bring it away. Yeah. Now, if I come back in with a brush and I want to hit that. Yeah, see that? Oh yeah, this is literally, this is an un, <laughs> hang on, that's, oh yeah, here, let's get you, B-roll, unpainted, painted, unpainted, Ooh. painted. So, please don't take this as a how-to, because, well, almost nothing I do I would consider a how-to. Uh, I'm just really impressed with how this technique looks, the variegation and spottiness that happens as the watercolors dry and the water spreads out and leaves the pigment, and moreover leaves it in a kind of slightly unstable bind bound situation so that it's somewhat uh, resilient to hand handling and yet shows its weathering. I'm really excited. So uh, we'll include a link to this watercolor set. This is from Art Philosophy. Uh, they make lots of little watercolor sets and this one is just full of some browns and yellows that are really ideal for weathering. Um, <clears throat> I like how movable this technique is. I like how adjustable and um, on, the, on the John Wick cross here, I ended up doing some of, some of the really lighter stuff in the corners and I, when I first put it on, I thought that's way too bold. And yet when it dries, it really blends in. In fact, I had to go bolder. I painted all the beads on this thing with little spots of some of the different colors. And it ends up making the whole thing feel much older and much more beaten up and part of like some real age. Um, that is it, a quick and dirty show and tell with some new weathering that I just figured out for myself last night. Again, I don't think I discovered this technique. I am sure there are watercolor weatherers around the world. Um, I am now one of them. Uh, and um, 
Yeah, if you have some specific techniques with watercolors re-weathering, well, talk about them in the comments and I will, uh, I will read those. Thanks guys, see you next time.